Hello friends, my name is Ari Thurger and today I'm going to talk about the Black Viking. Now, my previous video was myself expressing my thoughts on racism and diversity and etc. And I will leave a link down below in the description for that video. And given the circumstances, I thought it would be interesting to tell you about the tale of the Black Viking. Now, this is a true historical account with a few fantastical elements here and there to beautify the tale, but no less true. And I advise you to turn on the subtitles because there will be a few strange names, as it is normal when we are dealing with Scandinavian studies. So let's get started. This is a story about a man named Geirmundur Eljorsin, born in Rogaland, Norway, between the years 850 and 950 Ado Domine. He was one of the first explorers to settle in Iceland, going with the early Viking expedition teams. This is not a fictional character from Norse mythology or the sagas, as I have said. This person is in fact an historical figure, and nowadays in Iceland people can still trace their bloodline through genetic tests to this ancestor of theirs, and such tests have been performed. He was a black Viking, but not in the way you might think. Not black because he was of African ancestry, nor because he was so evil that he gained this seemingly ominous title of being dark, when darkness is associated with evil, mystery, death and even magic. He was black or dark according to the perception of the people of these times. Uh, the reactions people had in relation to this man are really interesting and makes us wonder about certain attitudes society has towards people who are physically different. The rather short story of Geirmundur Eldorsin is present within the Lundnaumauk, which is the Book of Settlements, a medieval Icelandic written record which describes the settlement of Iceland by the Norse between the 9th and the 10th centuries. If you research the story, it's called Geirmundar Tothre Eldorsins, and this story is about Geirmundar and his brother Haumund. This account comes in great uh, detail about the lineage of Gaumundur, uh, which I will not uh, tell it here, so we can go straight to the point. Suffice it to say that there was a man called Hjör uh, doing the regular raiding and pillaging to obtain wealth. This Hjör went uh, ro uh, raiding in Björnland, the westernmost part of Siberia, where there was a great uh, trading activity between the natives and the Norse. Hjör took an hostage of value, a young Siberian uh, woman called Lufvinia, the very daughter of the king of Björnland. Hjör ended up marrying this woman. Now, in Siberia, there were no kings, uh, these were nomadic people, so it's quite possible that this whole story of her being a princess was made up to have a royal justification for her to become a queen in Norway, otherwise, without a royal lineage, she would have no claim to the throne. The majority of Siberians are of Mongol origins, with dark hair and skin, and Lufvina was no exception. Now, speaking of genetics, we know that when two people both having different skin colors from one another, the darker pigmentation tends to thrive and to be more visible. But this is nowadays that we have this knowledge. Back in medieval times, people expected their sons to follow their father's lineage, therefore more prone to look like their fathers. Here was a man with Nordic features, so people were surprised when Lufvina gave birth to two boys with dark hair and skin. To the ancient Scandinavian societies, people with darker skin colors were considered to be, well, black. But being black during these times, at least in ancient Scandinavia, wasn't necessarily a motive for prejudice, uh, intolerance. The only problem here was the fact that the father was white, tall, fair of hair and the social uh, belief that children should look like their fathers. These were patriarchal societies. Another pro problem was that the children look nothing like the royal lineage of kings and queens of Norway. They look much more like thralls, slaves, 
and this was absolutely unconceivable for nobles. This isn't a case of racism in ancient societies. The problem wasn't directly due to their skin, the problem was breaking the royal lineage. The secret of the two brothers, Geirmundur and Helmund, was kept by the family and a few trustworthy people. A white slave woman had given birth to a son, and so they replaced the two brothers for this white-skinned baby from a slave. The, true, the two brothers lived as slaves within their own father's household. As I have said, it didn't matter at all if the boys had light skin or dark skin, the only thing that mattered was the fact that they were sons of the king and carried within themselves many of the noble and royal virtues of this great lineage, independent of the dark skin. The two, the two young boys grew up and became healthy, resilient, strong and intelligent. All the characteristics associated with royalty, while the young white prince grew up weak, cowardly and not very clever. A verdict of his slave ancestry according to this account and the beliefs of this time. When the boys reached the age of four, it was clear to those who knew the secret that no one could hide the truth any longer that the slave boy who looked like a prince had no nobility at all. He only had the color considered right because it was the color uh, closer to the color of yore and nothing more. Well, finally the mother brought forth the two brothers and told the truth to the king. Yeah, the king had absolutely no idea about this swapping baby's scheme. The king was only surprised by the color of their skins because he had never seen before such darker skins, but he believed the boys were his sons. Therefore, the boys gained this nickname, Hildorskin, Dark Skin. The boys grew up to be great warriors and raiders, accumulating wealth and honor, and perfectly accepted by the society they lived in. Finally, Geirmundur, like his father before him, traveled to Bjormland, Siberia, and returned with another Siberian wife, Ilturka. Together they settled in Ireland and then in Iceland, where they became a very powerful family. The truth of this story has been confirmed by DNA tests of living Geirmundur's descendants, living in Iceland, who have mitochondrial well, maternal DNA, which indicates their mother's Asian Mongolian ancestry. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this short tale, which is an, a true historical account. And I thought it would be interesting to present you with this story after the previous video I have done. So, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. All the links to my social media are down below at the description. And, well, tak for it all.